Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. <laughs> Okay, this is the session number three of this week. We are almost done with the second week two. Um, we are almost done with the middle of this course, so we are going to end this course in a couple of weeks. So after this one, we are just going to have two more weeks uh, to complete this module. So we are in the middle. And then we are going to end with this course. It's really, really fast. I think it's like we are not going to have enough time to, to complete the topics if we uh, are not going to begin working um, in this moment. So we're going to continue because we were talking about the future and also the use of a specific words to talk about future things. And of course, we were talking about the use of specific expressions to um, talk about the moment. We're not just talking about future in a couple of years. We're talking about a specific moment in time. So we are going to continue with that information because we have a lot of uh, things that we need to do um <clears throat> to talk about the future so in this moment i'm going to look for the good evening i'm going to look for the document so give me a second Okay, here we have the information that we were seeing yesterday. So we are going to continue from this point to the other uh, words or the other ideas that we are going to work with this topic. Uh, we are going to see other expressions that we can use to talk about the future or uh, possible actions because the main thing of this um future tense is to talk about future actions, but also possible things that are going to happen in a couple of hours, minutes, days, or something like that. So we are going to continue. Here we have just will, because it says that we can use will to talk about future events. We believe to be certain. Aquí estamos nada más utilizando lo que es el verbo, eh, el, I mean, del, el uso del will, pero eh, en este caso es cuando no estamos, eh, bueno, nosotros sí podemos estar seguros o creemos que algo va a suceder, but in this case it's not certain. No está siempre eh, certero. But in some cases, um, we believe something and we are kind of sure that this uh, thing is going to happen or this action is going to happen. But at the end, it's not like that. Because in this case, um, maybe I can think that it's going to rain so hard right now or it's going to rain tomorrow in the morning. 
but I'm not sure it's going to happen in that way because maybe it could, I mean, it will rain or not, but I'm not secure about that idea. So in this case, we are going to use will with that kind of ideas. Cuando no estemos 100% seguros, cuando no hayamos comprobado que eso sí va a suceder, eh, quizás no tenemos una cita previa, quizás eh, no estamos, eh, no tenemos la certeza 100% de que vaya a suceder una acción, vamos a utilizar el will. But we are going to see what kind of words we can use when we are 100% or at least 90% secure that we are going to complete an action. And that's another thing that we are going to see. So in this case, we add perhaps, maybe, probably, possibly to make the belief less certain. Como estamos utilizando el will para hablar de que algo pues, puede ser o no certero, en este caso para decir que quizás nosotros no es que estemos 100% seguros, pero podría llegar a pasar. So in this case, we are like um, guessing something y quitarle un poco de... de, de de seriedad a las cosas que estamos diciendo, podemos utilizar palabras como perhaps, maybe, probably, possibly. Y aquí ya le estamos quitando como esas, esa seriedad de decir, ah, 100% estoy segura de qué va a pasar. Como por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, it will snow tomorrow. It will snow tomorrow. Va a nevar mañana. I'm secure about that? No, I'm not. I am just saying an idea. And I want to take the, the main idea or I, I don't want to sound like I am like kind of crazy. I'm going to use this kind of words. Ahí ya le, le meto esas palabras y ya la gente dice, mm, It could be, but I don't think. Yo creo que tal vez podría pasar, podría ser eh, algo que en algún momento podría darse. But um, I'm not sure. No estoy seguro de que pueda llegar a suceder. But in this case, it's like we are like making jokes or something like that. So that's why we use this kind of words. So we're going to continue with this. Okay, in this case, we have some examples using those words. And we have the first example. I'll probably come back later. I'll probably come back later. Probablemente vaya a regresar más tarde. Are we sure about this action? No. Maybe we are not going to have enough time. Maybe we are going to do something else. Maybe we are going to travel or something like that. So in this case, we are not sure to come back to that place. But I am using probably. So in that case, I am saying that I am not sure to do this action. Aquí no estamos asegurando, estamos dando quizás una mínima de esperanza de que vayamos a hacer esta actividad. Pero no es que vaya a pasar 100%, porque si no, yo podría decir, I'm going to come back later. I'm going to come back later. 
ahí sí estoy asegurando de que voy a regresar. Voy a volver más tarde. Y en esta probablemente vuelva más tarde. I'm not sure. Next one. He will possibly find out when he sees Jenny. Él probablemente, él posiblemente, él vaya a entenderlo cuando vea a Jenny. We're talking about some situations. Maybe she makes some changes in her appearance. Um, maybe she is doing something. Maybe, I don't know, he feels something for Jenny. And in this case, we can use this kind of um, sentences because we are not sure that he is going to find out what is the answer um, when he is seeing this girl. <clears throat> no siempre vamos a, a, a estar seguros de que alguien va a entender, ¿verdad? Um, lo que nosotros tratamos de decir o lo que está sucediendo. Porque hay personas que a veces eh, no se dan cuenta de pequeños detalles, entonces no estamos seguros de que vaya a suceder. Maybe it will be okay. Maybe it will be okay. Tal vez vaya a estar bien but we are not sure that it's going to be something good. Perhaps we will meet again someday. Este ya es más improbable todavía. Perhaps we will or will meet again someday. We're using two words that are making me to understand that it's not going to be possible because we are using perhaps and also we are going to, uh, we are using some they. Aquí ya lo estamos haciendo bien improbable porque le estamos diciendo que quizás, tal vez, probablemente nos volvamos a ver algún día. Aquí no estamos asegurando el siguiente mes en dos meses, en tres meses, sino algún día, cosa que a veces nunca sucede. Then, we often use will with I think or I hope. Recuerden que esto es um, algo improbable, algo que nosotros creemos que va a suceder. Entonces, aquí utilizamos yo creo, yo pienso que va a suceder tal acción. So, in that case, it's very... Um, Like, we use a lot the I think or I hope with this kind of uh, ideas because we are thinking about something. So, in this case, we often use wheel with I think or I hope. And we have some examples. I think I will go to bed now. This is for us. I think I'll go to bed Now, ese es para nosotros, ¿verdad? I think I go to bed, um, go to bed now. ¿Por qué es improbable? Because we are doing something. We are in this session. So, in this case, we cannot do this action right now. And we are going to do it in a couple of hours, maybe. Because uh, I don't know if you have something to do after the session. Maybe yes. Um, and in my case, I know that I can't. 
because I have another um I I have another group, and then I have to complete some activities more, because I have a lot of things to do at this hour. So this for me is like very improbable, so I cannot do it right now. So I think I will go to bed now. Next one. I think she will do well in the job. I think she she'll do well in the job. Yo pienso que ella lo va a hacer bien en el trabajo. We are not sure because uh, we cannot be in that place or we cannot predict what are the things that are going to happen in that place and maybe we can make a mistake or something like that so we are not sure about this one i hope you will enjoy your stay i hope you will enjoy your stay Another one that we are not sure because uh, people are not like feeling good in that place. They are finding um, that moment like awkward or something like that, or they don't like the place. Um, they don't like the food. Uh, there is a specific smell that they don't like. So we are not sure that someone it's going to enjoy that moment so we are wanting something but it is not possible to complete that aquí no podemos nosotros cumplir esta acción o esta actividad porque no somos nosotros los que eh, estamos decidiendo es otra persona la que tiene que eh, saber o ver si le va a gustar ¿verdad? entonces hay personas que son bastante delicadas y un olor un sonido, eh, tal vez un color eh, o algo les incomoda. Entonces, aquí solo nos queda tratar, ¿verdad? Esperar a que pueda disfrutar de su estancia. I hope you won't make too much noise. I hope you won't make too much noise. Espero que no vayas a hacer mucho ruido. Then, we use will at the moment we make a new decision or plan. The thought has just come into your head. In this case, is when you are in a, a specific place and you are like thinking about different things, and you are in your own mind. Uh, as we said in Spanish, estamos en la luna. Because we are like, like that. We are boring, I mean, we are bored or something like that. Estamos aburridos o quizás estamos pasando mucho tiempo en un mismo lugar y ya estamos pensando nosotros en otras cosas. And in that moment, you make a new plan or you make a new decision. This one happens a lot to me because when I am kind of boring or I have like this kind of moment during the day in which I am like very tired and I take a couple of minutes to uh, relax. Well, it's not like a complete relax, but I have like this moment in which I am sitting alone and I am like thinking a lot of things or thinking about the the activities that I am going to do in a couple of minutes or, or in the next hour or something like that. And I tend to uh, use my cell phone to check uh, Pinterest. I know that this is kind of... Uh, funny but I like that application a lot eh, because I can find a lot of things a lot of ideas in there so when I am in that app I am 
making new decisions and I said, ah, I'm going to, uh, I will do this one. I will buy paper, I will uh, paint uh, uh, something, um, I will make this food or something like that. But this one is not going to be completed because I don't have time. Entonces, cuando estamos en esos momentos de divagación, estamos divagando, en mi caso, pues, yo tengo un lugar en el que me encanta divagar, que ya les decía, ese es Pinterest, que es esa aplicación interesantísima donde podemos encontrar muchas ideas, eh, tanto para el hogar, como para el trabajo, como para la vida diaria, the different things. Y digo, ah, este me gusta, voy a hacer este cuadro, eh, o voy a hacer, digamos, esa pintura o voy a comprar papel y voy a hacer esas flores o something like that pero es algo que yo hago en el momento no lo estoy planificando no le estoy poniendo una hora no le estoy poniendo una fecha so in that case I'm not going to do it no lo voy a hacer because I'm not sure about the time that I have for this activity and this one is something new that I need to to have in my life so it's not going to be like done in the same moment so that's why we use um, this kind of, uh, of expressions so in this case it's just a thought that come into my mind es solo un pensamiento que viene a nuestra cabeza cuando es un pensamiento espontáneo un plan espontáneo que se nos ocurrió en el momento utilizamos will So in this case, we have different examples. And we have, bye, I will phone you when I get there. Bye, I'll phone you when I get there. Te llamaré cuando llegue ahí. In some cases, we are not doing these things because uh, we forget to do it. So in this case, it's just like we are thinking about that activity, but we are not sure that we are going to do. I will answer that. I, I, will... have, I have a, uh, a question. Tisha. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, are you talking about it? I will find you when I get there. It's not a, I, I will call you. When mm -hmm. I get there. No, in this case, we can use both expressions. You can use call and also phone. Um, it is possible to use a lot of expressions, but in this case, you can use phone. I will phone you. Te llamaré o, te, uh -huh. o, o usaré el teléfono para llamarte. Y también podemos utilizar I will call you. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. You're That's welcome. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay, in this case, remember that when in, in English, we have a lot of expressions that uh, we can use like to express the same thing. I remember that we have an expression. I don't know if, if you have um, heard this one. When you say goodbye to someone, you said, see you later. But we have another one that is smell you later. I don't know if you have heard this one. I smell you later. But um, we had a person that is teaching us English and he's, uh, he said this expression. And we uh, thought that it was like kind of funny because we are talking about the smell. But it's an expression that we can use to see, to say, see you later. And it's kind of funny. Entonces, hay varias expresiones que podemos utilizar que tal vez nosotros decimos, ah, pero suena diferente. 
Pero es como en esta del, del phone you, el de la llamada. Es como ese del I smell you later. Pero tenemos diferentes expresiones. And we are going to find more uh, um, expressions during this kind of activities. And the last one. I won't tell him. I promise. I won't tell him. I promise. No le voy a decir a él. Lo prometo. Mm. This one is kind of difficult because if you want to talk with someone about these activities or these kind of secrets and you are like uh, sure that this person is, um, it's not going to say anything, but you need to talk with them. You are going to tell them, but it is not like a, a good idea, but it happens. Now, we are going to see the number two. We have just will. This one is just the uses or in which cases you are going to use will. Now, we are going to use the verb be and also going to. Vamos a tener también el uso del verbo to be en futuro, o sea, en expresiones de futuro. Y también vamos a ver el uso del going to. I'm going to divide this one. And we are going to see here, B, with is expressions is um, an R. And also we have going to plus infinitive. Now we have the affirmative, the negative, and the question. So we are going to see the different ways in which we can like create statements in positive, negative, and also how to create questions with the verb, I'm sorry, with the verb to be and with um, going to. In affirmative, I'm going to play, I am, going to play like this. Next one, you are going to play. He, she, and it is going to play. We are going to play. And they are going to play. Four negatives. We have the same ideas, but in this case, we're just going to use the negative word. I am. not going to play. So in this case, we just add the negative word to make these statements. That one is very easy. And the questions, the same thing. In this case, if you can see, we have the verb to be. So in these questions, we are not going to use the auxiliaries 
and we are not going to use the WH words. In this case, we are going to use the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. So in this case, am I going to play? So in this case, we have this basic information and we are um, like secure about the use of this information because we are like seeing this information a lot. Now, we're going to see the uses or in which cases we are going to use this expression, the verb to be and going to plus the infinitive like we do with the uh, expression wheel. So the first thing is the one which is used most often in spoken English is going to, not wheel. We use going to when we want to talk about a plan for the future. Now, in this case, podemos llegar a pensar que wheel es el más utilizado en inglés para hablar del futuro, Pero no es así. Cuando estamos hablando, cuando hacemos el, el, la conversación, el spoken el language, vamos a utilizar más que todo el going to, no el will. Ese es el más común, el going to. Porque con este estamos hablando de planes para futuro, que es el primero que vamos a ver. So in this case, we have some examples. And the first one, I'm going to see him later today. I'm going to see him later today. Voy a verlo más tarde hoy. ¿Cuál es la diferencia con el will? Que aquí yo ya hice quizás una cita, yo ya hablé con esa persona y ya quedamos de vernos en la tarde. ¿Puede cambiar esa situación? Sí, puede cambiar, pero yo estoy segura de que va a suceder porque yo ya hice quizás... Eh, Los planes previos, ¿verdad? Y ya cambié mi horario para decir que, que voy a ver a esa persona. Pero uno nunca sabe, ¿verdad? La otra persona eh, puede cambiar de parecer y ya no nos veamos más tarde. Pero eso es otra cuestión. But I am sure that we are going to do this activity. Next one, they are going to launch it next month. Ellos lo van a lanzar el próximo mes. Podemos estar hablando de un nuevo producto, podemos estar hablando de un videojuego, podemos estar... Eh, Hablando de quizás una película, una serie, something like that. 
Ah, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Um, I know that in, in this moment, um, are kind of hard because it's raining in different places. Because, uh, here is going to rain again. Uh, it was raining a couple of, uh, minutes ago, like thirty minutes ago, and now it's starting raining again. So don't worry. Um, I know that uh, something is happening. So. If the power goes out, you know that you can see the the, the session again on YouTube or you can uh, read the information of the document. So don't worry about that. Next one, we are going to have lunch first. We are going to have lunch first. And then we are going to have a meeting, something like that. Um, she's going to see what she can do. And the last one, I'm not going to talk for very long. Next one, notice that this plan does not have to be for the near future. Aquí nos damos cuenta que este plan no tiene que ver o no tiene que hacerse en, eh, en un futuro muy cercano. Aquí también podemos hablar de acciones que van a pasar en varios años en el futuro porque ya estamos haciendo una planificación de qué es lo que va a suceder. In my case, I can say that I'm going to work in the same place for three years more, maybe. Voy a seguir trabajando en ese lugar por tres años más porque eh, quizás ya tengo un contrato, ¿no? Entonces, ahí en ese caso sí voy a utilizar el going to. Eh, maybe we are paying for something. Uh, we have a debt or, I don't know, different things that we are sure that are going to continue in the future. La diferencia quizás más notable con el will es que el will no lo utilizamos para futuros muy lejanos sino para cosas que van a suceder eh, en unos minutos, en unas horas, en unos días. Pero este going to sí lo podemos utilizar para futuros más lejanos. Eh, para 10 años, 15 años, 20 años, incluso para cuando seamos ancianos y nos retiremos. Porque es algo seguro, ¿verdad? Que vamos a continuar haciendo. Tenemos dos ejemplos aquí. When I retire, I'm going to go back to Barbados to live. Cuando me retire, me voy a ir a vivir a Barbados de nuevo. Maybe we are in another country. Maybe we are in another place. Because we are working. But when the time comes, we can go back to that place. For example, you are working on... Um, Santa Ana, and you are from um, Morazan. And you said, when I retire, I'm going to go back to Morazan to live because there is my house. Entonces sabemos que vamos a regresar a ese lugar. Y aquí no estamos hablando de unos dos, tres años, sino que estamos hablando de muchos años en el futuro. What is the form, the correct form, teacher? Sorry, I'm Tell going. Me. I got the uh, what is the correct form in this case? We have I'm going to work in on it, or I will work in on it. Um, if you are sure that we are going to do, you are going to say, I'm going to work on it, 
But if you are not sure, you are going to say, I will. I will ah, work. Okay, sure. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I got it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And the second example, in 10 years time, I'm going to be boss of my own successful company because we are working to achieve this goal. So in this case, we are sure that we are going to be the boss of that company. We use going to when we want to make a prediction based on evidence we can see now. Aquí hablamos de predicciones. Ah, pero entonces, ¿qué está pasando? ¿No estábamos tan seguros de que iba a suceder? Bueno, eso es un poco diferente de lo que veíamos con will, porque en el caso de will estamos haciendo predicciones basados en nuestros en nuestras creencias basados en algo que nosotros creemos en algo que nosotros queremos en este caso vamos a utilizar going to cuando estemos haciendo predicciones pero estén basadas en evidencia we have evidence and now we are making a prediction maybe I am seeing black eh, clouds on the sky Yo estoy viendo nubes negras en el cielo. What can I say? Ah, it's going to rain. But why? Because I have evidence that maybe it's going to happen. Entonces, tenemos que tener una base, una evidencia para poder hablar sobre eso. Si yo estoy viendo que está sunny, que está soleado, so I cannot say that. Um, it's going to rain because it is not a possible. We don't have evidence. Maybe it could happen or maybe it can happen, but uh, it is not like very sure. But if I have like the evidence, maybe I am listening some uh, rumblings or maybe there are like black clowns or it's like having a kind of... Mm, cool, not cold, cool uh, wine or something like that, I can say that it's going to rain. But if I don't have these elements, I cannot say that. So in this case, it's based on evidence. Si tenemos evidencia, si es algo claro, si es algo que pues nadie puede negar, vamos a utilizar el going to. Now we have the examples. Look out, that cup is going to fall out. I mean, to fall off. Mira, esa, esa taza se va a caer. ¿Por qué? Porque en ese momento estamos viendo, ¿verdad? Que quizás eh, está a la orilla de una mesa 
eh, quizás alguien pasó y la tocó y empezó, ¿verdad?, a moverse. But we are seeing something and we can say this kind of expressions. Look at those black clouds. It's going to rain soon. These figures are really bad. We are going to make a loss. And the last one, you look very tired. You are going to need to stop soon. Aquí, ¿verdad? Es algo que estamos viendo. Tú estás muy cansado. Vas a tener que detenerte pronto. Because you are tired and maybe you are going to um, get sick or something like that if you are doing all of the activities that you are doing during the day or the week. Okay, in this case, we are going to replace something. Nosotros podemos reemplazar el going to go solo escribiendo going. Esta expresión, going to go, que sabemos que está correcto porque lo aplicamos con el going to más el infinitivo que es el go. Pero para no ser tan redundante, en lugar de decir going to go, solo podemos utilizar going y está correcto. Ejemplo. I'm going out later. Voy a salir más tarde. She's going to the exhibition tomorrow. Now, we are going to see the third form. Vamos a ver la tercera forma. Aquí ya tenemos el going to. Ahora, vamos a ver, quizás es como una mezcla de, pero vamos a ver el uso de will plus verb to be plus ing. Es como una combinación de el will, del uso del will, con lo que es el verbo to be y también con el gerundio, con el ing. Affirmative, and we're just going to make some examples. I will be doing. Es como decir, voy a estar haciendo. Something like that.
Ahora, ¿cómo hacemos nuestras preguntas con esta estructura? En este caso, obviamente, vamos a utilizar el will para iniciar nuestra pregunta. Teacher. Tell me. Uh, in this case, only singular. Only? Only singular. Only singular. No, you can use plural, but I am not using the, the other uh, pronouns, but you can use the plural. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will I uh, be doing Will you be doing Will he, she, and it be doing? This one is known as future continuous. Eso es lo que conocemos como el continuo. Ya lo vemos en presente, ya lo vemos en pasado, el uso de los continuos. And in this case is future continuous. And we can use this um, kind of a structure to talk about something that will be in progress at a particular moment in the future. Así como con los eh, continuos, estamos hablando de que algo va a estar en progreso en un momento en particular en el futuro. No es que se vaya a completar en ese momento, sino que va a llevar como un progreso y va a estar sucediendo todavía en ese momento particular del futuro. And we have three different examples. This time next week, I, I will be sitting on the beach in Barbados. This time next week, I'll be sitting on the beach in Barbados. I'll be thinking about you all back in the office and I'll be laughing. And the last one, we will be enjoying ourselves too, boss. We won't be doing any work while you are not here. Enjoying ourselves We want teacher. Tell me. Uh, what is uh, long, long in Spanish? 
Laughing. Laughing. Yes. In Spanish, eh, significa reírse. Ah, ok. Me voy a estar riendo. Básicamente le dice que se va a estar riendo por lo que recuerda. Le va a, le va a causar risa. Exactamente. Porque quizás hicieron algo gracioso, entonces se va a reír cuando recuerde a esa persona o lo que hicieron. Ok, teacher. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Now, uh, we are almost done. We have like a couple of minutes, like three minutes. So we are going to, I think, to almost end with these two parts. And in this case, we um, can use this future continuous to talk about future events that are fixed or decided. En este también, en este... Um, en este formato, ¿verdad? En esta estructura también podemos hablar de eventos en el futuro que ya han sido decididos o arreglados. O sea, que ya tenemos quizás una fecha. Así como con el going to, también podemos utilizar el future continuous para hablar de acciones que ya están decididas en el futuro. So in this case, we are just going to see the examples that we have here. And it says, I will be visiting your country on a regular basis. In fact, I'm going to be coming next month. Voy a estar visitando tu país. Um, y básicamente le estamos asegurando que vamos a llegar el próximo mes. Next one, he will be looking after the factory until we can appoint a new manager. Básicamente, él va a estar a cargo de la empresa o del lugar hasta que puedan eh, contratar a una nueva persona, un nuevo supervisor. So, here we have some of the uses of the future, and we are going to stop this topic here because we just have one more um, session. That is the session that we are going to have tomorrow, and we are going to end with the topics of the platform. Remember that you need to complete section number three and also the midterm for this week. So, We are going to end this session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the last session of this second week. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Okay, teacher. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night too.